Hey guys, it's Thomas here, your aquatics expert with Big Owls, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a small saltwater aquarium. Great for beginners, and it's gonna be good for fish such as clownfish, damsels, gobies, and invertebrates like different types of skunk cleaner shrimp, uh, even hermit crab snails, etc. It's pretty easy to do, but does require a little bit of knowledge, so let me knowledge you up right now. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find a good spot for the aquarium. And when you're looking for that spot, you wanna keep a few things in mind. Most importantly, you wanna make sure it's not directly in front of or near direct sunlight, like from a window. You also wanna make sure that it's not beside anything that's going to rapidly heat or cool, like a drafty doorway, or perhaps even a fireplace or an air conditioning unit. Uh, and obviously you wanna stick it somewhere where you're gonna be able to enjoy it, like this nice seating area that I'm in right now. So after you get the stand in place, the next thing you wanna do is make sure that it's gonna be level. So let's go grab a level. Well, looking good. I'm gonna make sure it's level in both directions. And we are good. So, time to get that tank. Next, we're just gonna get this tank and put it on the stand. And there it is. If the tank has any dust or dirt on the inside, uh, just sometimes it happens from them sitting in a warehouse or sitting at the store for a little bit. You can take a wet paper towel with just some tap water and wipe down the inside of the tank. Really important, never ever use any kinds of soaps or chemicals when cleaning the aquarium, especially on the inside, and that'll make sure that your fish are always in great shape. Okay, let's go get the filter. All right, so when it comes to the filter for a small saltwater aquarium like this 20 gallon that we're setting up, I prefer to actually use a canister filter as opposed to a hang-on type filter. Reason being a canister filter will typically have about the same amount of flow when it's rated for that size of aquarium as a hang-on might, but it's got much more media inside of the filter itself. That means a lot more actual filtering power. There's a lot more space for biological media for that bacteria to harbor and grow to help take care of the nitrates and ammonia, et cetera, so that they don't get out of whack inside the aquarium. So I'm gonna show you how to set this one up. This is a Marineland 160. And here we go. So now that we have everything outside of the box here, uh, what I've done is I've taken the media baskets out of this canister filter because if you notice here, the media is actually still in plastic packaging that we're gonna have to remove. So I'm definitely gonna do that. And with this particular canister filter, the O-ring for the motorhead is not installed on the motorhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that on there too. And then once that's done, I'm going to get the tubing. I'm gonna get the valve block at the top of the canister filter, everything set up and put together on the canister filter. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut the tubing to fit the tank and to put the canister in the stand and then have those tubes come up the back properly. These bags of carbon, once you get them out of this plastic packaging, you'll notice there's a little bit of carbon dust in there. You're gonna to wanna to take these out, and rinse them under the tap for about 10 seconds each bag. You don't wanna crunch them up or anything like that. That'll just create more carbon dust. So just rinse them quickly until they're rinsed clean. So you see water coming out and there's no black carbon dust. And then they're ready to go back in the container so that they can go inside the canister filter. And now we can put all the media into the filter, starting with the coarse foam tray, second, the chemical media tray, and finally, the bio media tray with fine filter pad. Oh. 
So next, it's time to install the valve block. So if you noticed, these aren't all the way up. They should be, and it'll tell you which side is to lock or unlock. And we wanna make sure it's unlocked so we can get it back on before we lock it. Should go all the way down without too much effort. Just push down until it's even at the top here. And we're gonna turn it into the lock position, put the lock down, and next, put the actual valve stem down. What this does is it controls the flow. So this would be on, or the valves are open. This shuts the valves off. This is simply a lock, which will allow you to either lock the valve block on or unlock it for removal. Next, we're gonna assemble the inflow and outflow pipes. So where the water gets sucked into the filter and where it comes back out. So we're gonna open this little bag up here containing some parts. We've got some suction cups. We've got the intake strainer. We've also got the single piece output with the little uh, flange at the end here. We also have a couple of clamps which are going to clamp the tubing onto these barbed fittings on the back here. You're gonna attach the intake strainer to the intake pipe and then attach the suction cups. So the intake stem has two suction cups where the output only requires one because it's really, really short. Just like that, you can do it on the back of the tank. Or if you're gonna have a background, I suggest doing it on the inside of the tank. That way it's stuck to the inside of the glass and not to your background. Next, it's time to get the tubing in order. So let's get that unpackaged. So what we're gonna do next is just quickly swing these lock nuts or clamping nuts all the way down to the bottom so that we can get the tubing on and then we'll reverse it back over top of the tubing to hold that tubing in place. The tubes are the exact same length and they are the exact same diameter. So it doesn't matter which one you stick where. So we'll put this guy right here. Get it right on there. And then just reverse thread the lock nut. Same thing on the other side. So my way to make sure that the tubing is the perfect length up the back of the aquarium is to actually take the input and output and put them on the front of the aquarium and measure the tubing there. So we're just gonna stick these up top, roughly where we're gonna situate them. I like to have them as far apart as possible. That way you're able to blow water across the tank towards the intake. So next we're going to hold the tubing up to roughly where it's going to meet. And you'll notice I didn't pull it taut, you don't want it perfectly taut. You actually want a little bit of slack. That way you're not gonna end up causing any problems with the tubing or putting pressure on the motor head from it being pulled. So once you find a comfortable spot, you're gonna crimp that tubing, you're gonna get a pair of scissors and you're just gonna cut it just like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and attach it. But before we do, let's do the other side. Also, you wanna make sure that you're putting the right tube on the right side. And it's marked right here. Out, in. This is the water coming into the canister. This is the water going out to the aquarium. So in is going to go onto the intake strainer side. So we're just gonna push it up till we meet that first little knuckle up here. And then we're gonna take one of our clamps, just put it around, clamp it on, So what we're going to do next is open up the valve block, unlock it and pop it out. So this way we can pull the tubes up off the aquarium and put them down the back of the tank 
where it's actually going to go so that the valve block pops out underneath the stand. We can just have our intake and output sitting on the back of the aquarium. So next, we're going to come down to the canister. We're just going to move it out of the way of the door. Open up the door and you'll notice that the valve block is waiting for us. We're going to turn the canister around because now the valve block's backwards. And we're going to pop it in the stand. And then we're going to attach the valve block back onto the canister. Make sure it's correctly locked and that the valves are open. Now the canister is ready to get primed with water and plugged in, but we're not going to do that next. Next, we're going to get the hood onto the aquarium. 